Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using slope deflection method. In this beam, the support C settles by 0.002 meter. The flexural rigidity EI is given as 8000 kilonewton meter square. Before starting the analysis, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are three spans, span AB, span BC and span CD. In the span AB, we have two point loads, 9 kN and 18 kN. 9 kN is acting at a distance of 2 m from the point A. 18 kN is acting at a distance of 4 m from the point A. In the span BC, we have uniformly varying load. It is maximum in the center, 24 kN per meter. In the span CD, we have uniformly distributed load, 18 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. Length of AB is 6 meter. Length of BC is 4 meter. Length of CD is also 4 meter. In this beam, all of the spans are having different moment of inertia. For the span AB, the moment of inertia is 1.5i. For the span BC, it is 3i. And for the span CD, it is 2i. Now, let us find the fixed end moments. First, let us find them in the span AB. In the span AB, we have two eccentric point loads, 9 kN and 18 kN. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WAB square upon L square and positive WA square B upon L square. Let us apply the values in the formulas. For this point load, A is 2, B is 4. And for this point load, A is 4 and B is 2. After the calculation, for M of A, B, we are getting minus 16. And for M of B, A, we are getting 20. Now, let us find the fixed end moments in the span B, C. In the span B, C, we have symmetrical uniformly varying load. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus 5 WL square upon 96 and positive 5 WL square upon 96. Here W is 24 and L is 4. Let us apply them. The support to C sinks by 0.002 meter. So we have to find the fixed end moments due to the sinking. The formula to find the fixed end moments due to sinking is 6 EA delta upon L square. If the sinking occurs on the left side of the span, the fixed end moments due to sinking will be positive. If it occurs on the right side of the span, the fixed end moments due to sinking will be negative. Since the sinking occurs on the right side, the fixed end moments due to sinking will be negative. In this formula, let us apply the values. EI is given in the question as 8000 kN meter square. Let us apply that. For the span BC, the moment of inertia is 3i. So we have to multiply the EI value with 3. Delta is 0 0.002, L is 4. When we calculate this, we will get minus 18. In the points B and C, the fixed end moments due to sinking will be same. So for M of CB, we can apply this value directly. No need to find one more time. After the calculation, for M of BC, we are getting minus 38 and for M of CB, we are getting 2. Now, let us find the fixed end moments in the span CD. 
In the span CD, we have uniformly distributed load 18 kN per meter. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 18, L is 4. Let us apply them. We know that the support C sinks by 0.002 meter. So we have to add the fixed end moments due to sinking. We know the formula for the fixed end moments 6EA delta upon L square. In this span, the sinking occurs on the left side. So the fixed end moments due to sinking will be positive. The moment of inertia for the span CD is 2I. So we have to multiply EI with the 2. Delta is 0 0.002 and L is 4. After the calculation, for MFCD we are getting minus 12 and for MFDC we are getting 36. Now let us start making the slope deflection equations. First let us make them in the span AB. In the equations, first let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of span AB is 6. Let us apply that. For the span AB, the moment of inertia is 1.5i. So in the equations, instead of i, we have to apply 1.5i. In the point A, we have a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So theta A will be 0. Finally, in the span AB, we have made two equations. Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the span BC. In the equations, first let us apply the fixed end moments. The moment of inertia for BC is 3i. So in the equations, instead of i, we have to apply 3i. Finally, in the span BC, we have made two equations. Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the span CD. In the equations, first let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of CD is 4. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia for CD is 2i. So in the equations, instead of i, we have to apply 2i. In the point D, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So theta d will be 0. Finally, in the span CD, we have made two equations. Now let us make the joint equilibrium equations. In the joint B, when we add the moments MBA and MBC, it will be 0. For MBA and MBC, let us apply the expressions from the slope deflection equations. Let us add them. When we add, we have to always keep the numerical on the right side. Let us keep this equation as number 7. In the joint C, when we add the moments MCB and MCD, it will be 0. Let us apply the expressions for MCB and MCD from the slope deflection equations. Then we have to add both of them and we have to keep the numerical on the right side. Let us keep this equation as number 8. We have made two equations, the 7th one and 8th one. Now we can take a calculator and apply these values and get the solutions. If you do not know how to use calculator for solving these two equations, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. Now let us find the final moments. When we apply the value of a theta b in the equation number 1, we are getting mab. When we apply the value of a theta b in the equation number 2, we are getting mba. When we apply the values of a theta b and a theta c in the equation number 3, we are getting mbc. When we apply the values of a theta b and a theta c 
in the equation number 4, we are getting MCB. When we apply the value of A theta C in the equation number 5, we are getting MCD. And finally, when we apply the value of A theta C in the equation number 6, we are getting MDC. So, in this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. Now, we are going to find the vertical reactions. First, let us take the span AB and find the vertical reactions. In the span AB, we have the moments MAB and MBA. MAB is acting in the anti-clockwise direction and MBA is acting in the clockwise direction. In this span, first let us find the reaction Ra. For that, let us take moment about B. In this case, we are moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anti-clockwise will be negative. Ra is acting in the clockwise direction. So, that will be positive and the distance is 6. So, 6 Ra. The point load 9 kN is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So, it will be negative and the distance is 4. The point load 18 kN is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So, that will be negative and the distance is 2. This movement is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So, that will be negative. And this movement is acting in the clockwise direction. So, that will be positive. Finally, for Ra, we are getting 10.28 kN. Now, let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0. Ra and Rb1 are acting upwards. So, both of them are positive. These two loads are acting downwards. So, both of them are negative. For Ra, we can apply 10.28. Finally, for Rb1, we are getting 16.72 kN. Now, let us take the span BC and find the vertical reactions. In the span BC, we have two movements. MBC, which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction, and MCB, which is acting in the clockwise direction. In this span, first, let us find RB2. For that, let us take a moment about to see. RB2 is acting in the clockwise direction. So, that will be positive and the distance is 4. So, for Rb2, the uniformly varying load is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So, it will be negative. For this kind of load, we have to multiply the area with the centroidal distance. It is a triangle. We know the formula for the area of a triangle. Half into breadth into height. Here the breadth is 4 and the height is 24. Now let us find the centroidal distance. This is a symmetrical triangle. So the centroid lies in the center. To find the centroid we have to divide the length 4 by 2. This movement is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So that will be negative. And this movement is acting in the clockwise direction. So, that will be positive. Finally, for Rb2, we are getting 27.42. Now, let us apply this rule and find Rc1. Rb2 and Rc1 are acting upwards. So, both of them are positive. The UVL is acting downwards. So, that will be negative. To convert the UVL load into point load, we have to find its area. We already know its area. Let us apply that. Finally, for RC1, we are getting 20.58 kN. Now, let us take the span CD and find the reactions. In the span CD, we have the movement MCD, which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction, and MDC, which is acting in the clockwise direction. By taking movement about D, we can find RC2 and by applying this rule, we can find RD. In the point B, we have calculated the reactions two times, RB1 and RB2. Let us add both of them so that we will get RB. In the similar way, 
let us add RC1 and RC2 so that we will get RC. Now using the reactions and loads, we can draw the shear force diagram. Here I have made the calculations for the shear force diagram. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now let us draw the free movement diagram. To draw the free movement diagram, we have to consider every span as a separate simply supported beam. First, let us take the span AB and see how to draw this diagram. Here I have converted the span AB into a simply supported beam. Let us take moment about B and find RA. By applying this rule, we can find RB. RA is 12 and RB is 15. When we multiply 12 into 2, we will get 24. And when we multiply 15 into 2, we will get 30. Now let us take the span BC. Here we have uniformly varying load. Here we have to apply the formula WL square upon 12. Using the formula, we are getting the ordinate 32. Using that, we can draw this diagram. In the span CD, we have uniformly distributed load. Here we have to use the formula WL square upon 8. Using the direction of the end movements, we can draw the end movement diagram. By combining free movement diagram and end movement diagram, we can draw the bending movement diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.